Hey everyone, this is Trace here, the quotation marks of course, humorous tutor, and in today's video we're actually going to, dare I say it, spark some interest in the heart. That's right, we are talking about the electrical conduction system. So, to understand the electrical activity of the heart, let's first have a look at the cardiac conduction system. So, what I mean by this is the pathway through which these electrical impulses travel through the heart to generate action potentials and to get the heart beating. So, the yellow there is the conduction pathway and we're going to start right at the start at the right atrium where we will find the sinoatrial or the SA node. So the SA node is basically just a collection of specialized pacemaker cells and you're going to find these on the wall of the right atrium. From the SA node, most of these uh, impulses need to get to the ventricles where the strongest contraction happens. And largely these uh, electrical impulses are going to travel down these internodal tracks to arrive at the atrioventricular or the AV node. Together the SA and the AV nodes are the heart's primary source of pacemaker cells. On top of that though the left atrium must also get a little bit of electrical activity going on and so this happens through the Bachmann's bundle. Well those electrical impulses that are destined to reach the ventricles must first pass that AV node that we mentioned earlier. At the AV node, that impulse is delayed, and what this means is it gives time for the blood to travel from the atria to the ventricles before the ventricles pump. You don't want the atria and the ventricles contracting at the same time. You want that unidirectional flow, so you've got to give time for the blood to get out of the atria and into, it, into the ventricles before the ventricles contract. So there need to be two separate contractions, atria and then ventricles. All right, so we've started at the SA node. Most of the impulses have traveled down the internodal tracks and then reached the AV node where that delay um, has occurred. And then from there, that electrical impulse can continue on its merry way to finally reach the ventricles. And first it'll go past the bundle of Hiss. Okay, so the bundle of Hiss is also known as the atrioventricular bundle, which makes sense, it's that little bit of a pathway that we find between the atria and the ventricles. Then from there, the bundle of his is going to split into a left and a right, primarily before uh, basically giving off more tiny branches to then synapse onto the myocardium or the ventricular walls. And these little fibers are called Purkinje fibers. Okay, so I've talked through some pretty important structures here. And I thought my, it might be a good idea to just highlight the pacemaker cells of the heart because the pacemaker cells are unique in the whole body and we're going to talk about this in a future video in that they just fire on their own. They don't require stimulus. Okay, So they are spontaneous and rhythmic firings of action potentials and the pacemaker cells are primarily found at the SA node, the sinoatrial node, and that is the primary natural pacemaker of the body. And then of course the AV node or the atrioventricular node where we previously discussed that this electrical impulse is delayed, roughly 100 milliseconds delay, allowing time for the blood to travel between the atria and the ventricles. Remember, we've got atria contracting first and then the ventricles. They can't happen at the same time. So these electrical impulses in the form of action potentials following this pathway can be detected and displayed as an ECG trace. <laughs> Get it, trace? Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, an echocardiogram. Um, and the trace is here displayed on your screen. And what you can see is we've got a series of waves. We've got the P wave being the initial small bump we see, the QRS complex being the respective corners that you can see on that huge wave, the T wave following after that slightly larger than the P wave. And then of course, we've got the intervals, which are in between waves also known as segments, so we've got the PQ interval or segment and the ST interval or segment between the P and the Q waves and the S and the T waves respectively. So what we're going to do now is just kind of put the two together and have a look at the electrical conduction system and how it corresponds to the ECG trace. So starting at the start, once again, at the sinoatrial node in the wall of the right atrium, we get 
the generation of an action potential which will spread throughout the atria via the Bachmann's bundle and also the internodal tracks, okay? And from there, that would mean our atria are depolarizing and that shows up as an upward deflection on the trace and that is our P wave, okay? Then after that, you can see that there's a slight delay between the P wave and the QRS complex, uh, indicated there in green by the PQ interval. And that there is representative of that delay caused by the AV node, remember? giving that time for the blood to travel between the atria and the ventricles. After that delay, you can see the QRS complex, which is huge, absolutely ginormous. Ginormous is not a word, I've just realized that. Um, but we see the QRS complex, and because it's so large, okay, that would make sense because we've got a lot more ventricular muscle than we do atrial muscle, and so we've got ventricular depolarization happening. So that means we've got action potentials spreading through the ventricles. After the gigantic, I noticed I said gigantic and not ginormous, after the gigantic QRS complex, we have yet another delay called the ST segment or the ST interval. And this is just that time of zero potential, okay? So there's no membrane potential and that sits between ventricular depole, what happens after depolarization, repolarization. So the ST interval is the moment of zero potential between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. And then after that, that follows with the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. Okay, so let's tick that off. We've got atrial depole, great. We've got ventricular depole and repole, but we've also got to remember that atrial repolarization does occur during this time. However, it happens roughly at the same time as ventricular depolarization, and because ventricular depole is um, comparatively so much larger, atrial repole is actually hidden within the QRS complex. And so that brings us to the end of this quick video. Hopefully we understand where these impulses come from, whereabouts they might be delayed, how they travel to other atria and also the two ventricles that sit below it, and the events on an ECG trace which correspond to the events within the intrinsic conduction system of the heart. Hopefully that makes enough sense. Um, this is just a short video because I thought I'd separate it out. I'd like to have a separate video about action potentials of pacemaker cells and also cardiac myocytes, which will be coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. And until then, um, thank you once again for sticking with me and these terrible trace jokes that I keep coming up with. Um, until next time, thank you.